rescheduled for a doubleheader on May the 26th. That means Valenti, Foster, Sully, and Hatchet will be here for four hours. And it also means six to eight tonight, a two hour show. Wednesday nights with Wojo. It's now Wednesdays with Wojo on the Jamie and Stoney show. Hi, Bob. How are you? You know what? We blame this on Valenti. Uh, he won. He demanded to be on the air today, and he ordered the uh, cancellation. Which, by the way, they didn't even let the fans there come in and get all tanked up on the beer. I know. <laughs> well, they probably saw how many fans were there yesterday, oh. and they're like, "Why bother, dude?" You know what's interesting? They, they might get postponed tomorrow too. It's fifty-fifty for that. Well, Joe, yeah. what time did you get on the air yesterday? I'm just curious. Six oh five. Oh, see, the show was cut by five minutes. Now you're going to have to do a full two hours. They don't mess with Wojo's show, okay? That <laughs> does not get postponed. By the way, enjoying the hell out of the show uh, this morning, uh, Jamie and Stoney. Uh, Jamie sounds a little bit nasally today. <laughs> a little higher, too, and voice. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. I don't know if, he, if he's come down with something. Um, well, yeah. Woj, I know you don't like to make uh, broad brush statements after oh, one boy. game, but uh, oh. what, what, what did yesterday tell you? Everything. No, in all seriousness. Everything. <laughs> that is the Tigers in a nutshell. Good and the bad, I think. Um, th- that's what they're going to be. If they win a game, it's going to be because their starting pitcher was a stud. Verlander was. They hit the ball over the fence. Three home runs. Didn't manufacture a whole bunch of offense anywhere else. They finished with six hits. Uh, they're going to have shaky outfield defense. All three outfield positions, a little shaky. And they're going to have a little bit of a scary bullpen situation pretty much every time, even if it doesn't uh, result in a blown save. With Shane Green couldn't get out of the ninth inning, whatever. That's them in a nutshell, exact right down the line, the good and the bad. Basically, as I suggested to Jim Leland, and he disagreed, and if you you didn't hear it, you'll hear it coming up at 950. They're a softball team. They always have been. Come on. Seriously, in a, in a, uh, uh, Ian Kinsler got picked off second base. I mean, it was everything, the good and the bad. And if they get outings like that, not just from Verlander, say whenever they play game two uh, in the next month or so, um, if, if Jordan Zimmerman, if they get that starting pitching, which is kind of hard to count on, that's, what, that's exactly what they'll be, hit the ball over the fence. Well, Joe, I have two questions. Uh Uh-oh. They're both very serious. Number one, what time do you actually wake up to come on the air here? What time is it now? 9.39. So what, you probably got up at 9.32? I'll probably wake up about (laughs) 9.55. Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm supposed to be awake right now. No, I got up about 8.45 or so. Whoa. I like to get my daily jog in first. (laughs) I, I think, like to get the oatmeal cooking, you know, fresh oatmeal. Yeah, I'm always up, please. When, when are you going to surprise us and actually do your segment in studio? Never. I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that might happen. I don't know. Hey, you know what? You know what would get me in the studio at this hour would be a bacon spread with some scrambled eggs, some um, hash browns. Could you do that? Maybe. Okay. Let's have a live remote from the Rams horn. <laughs> <laughs> Old George is uh, up the street. All right, well, Joe, what was what was worse Monday night, the officiating or the shooting? Uh, I'd say both. I got to go with both. <laughs> no, the shooting was bad, and and I railed about this on the um, the Wojo show. Um, it, it, college basketball has always had this issue, but over officiating in general has become a scourge upon American sports. Even going back to the poor little lady golfer who got her yes. little title ripped away, right? Correct. Oh, stop blaming the emailer. The guy was just doing his civic duty. Oh, uh, shut no, up. I'm not blaming the emailer. I'm blaming the over official, the amount of rules. There's too many rules. Because even after there were 44 call, uh, fouls called in Gonzaga, North Carolina, everybody in foul trouble rendered, rendered it unwatchable, including poor shooting. Even after that, I saw people like people in the business defending the refs while they're just uh, implementing the rules as required, okay, then things are being over-regulated in, in all sports. And I mean, football, every single year there's 19 re-clarifications and changes, and I think it's just rendered these officials kind of, uh, I don't know, 
petrified that they have to follow the rules to the law instead of using a little bit of common sense. Um, the Joe Louis Arena is obviously closing on Sunday. The Palace, unless there's a miracle, which won't happen, closes on Monday. I have a question about the two tenants there. Uh, first for the Pistons, who should come back? Stan Van Gundy, the general manager, or the president, or Stan Van Gundy, the coach? Well, if you're forcing me to pick one. Yeah, I am. Stan Van Gundy, the general manager. Okay. Um, because I, and it's not, I don't necessarily buy the old theory that a coach always wears out his welcome and stuff. But I, I do think he has worn, because they're a frustrating team for anybody to coach. They're a frustrating team for anybody to watch. So he himself might have reached the point of frustration where either that, if he wants to be the coach, still be, remain the coach, then he's going to have to change the team, <laughs> you know, which he has the power to do. Because uh, they just seem to be at a level of frustration between each, each other that doesn't look right now like it can be easily fixed. And as far as the Red Wings go, if uh, one has to be back, Ken Holland or Jeff Blaschel, who should it be? Ooh. I got to say both. Oh, shut. oh, that's right. I'm not allowed to do that. Yeah. You know what? I would bring Ken Holland back to finish out his contract Look for at another that. year. So you're if, saying if you're bring... fire Jeff Blaschel. So you're going to write that in the column today? <laughs> well, no, you asked me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Whoa, Joe wants Jeff Bla- yeah. Let I'm going to text Fellini. Finally, you have a strong opinion on it something. It was the right move. Look, listen, they, they've actually, um, you've seen modest amounts of development late in the season once they were out of it. So, but still, um, Blashill, I think, has not delivered exactly on what they had hoped for, this, this uh, young uh, player molder. Now, again, there are some signs of it late in the season, so I have a feeling they're going to end up bringing them both back. That's my guess. Well, I'll also ask you this question that uh, Vacation Taking Jamie came up with last week. Oh, geez. If you have one game to win... Who do you want coaching? Caldwell, Van Gundy, Blaschel, or Osmus? Oh, God. One game in their respective sports. Yeah. Not like switching sports, right? No. right? Yeah. Or fire them all. <laughs> no, that's not an option. Oh. Oh, my God. You know, my first reaction is Van Gundy, but they have lost so many. I mean, they lose to every team that practically that's a little bit better than them. Like, they'll probably hate to say it, lose to Toronto tonight. Um... Oh, that's too hard. That's too. You know what? I think you have to say Caldwell. That's, that's what I said because Van Gundy's been wasting timeouts the way Caldwell has. I think it's easy. You go, Osmus. Oh, real quick, Wojo. <laughs> I, I have so much of an easier question for you. Okay, God, since that you was sh- a tough. Well, you struggled with the last three, so I'm going to make this easy on you to oh, end boy. things. Um, Sunday, the Joe closes down. Oh, right. You're going to be there eating. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Um. The Tigers play the Red Sox, and I believe it's going to be Porcello v. Verlander. Is Sunday the greatest day in Detroit sports history? Please, go ahead. No! Oh. First of all, uh, they'll only be playing game two on Sunday, so it'll probably be <laughs> Jordan Zimmerman on the mound or Fulmer or whatever. And, no, do you equate closing the Joe with a greatest day in Detroit history? Well, it's April in the D. It's the best day in April in the D, right? Yeah. See, I think it's going to be – it's not going to be like when Tiger Stadium closed and people were, like, being – crawling out of the stadium in tears and clawing at their faces. But I do think it's going to be somber. I think it's going to be a little emotional. Here's what – Stoney is good at this. Rieger, stand down for a second. Stoney is the – Stoney is the godfather. He knows these things. I understand. I'm just the godson. Right. What will, like, the last – minute and a half of that game Sunday at the Joe B like. Well, Shane's going to score an empty net goal to close the Joe. Okay, but I mean, <laughs> will the crowd just be like cheering for the last minute? Yeah, and a half? it'll be, it'll be a standing ova- they- it'll be a standing ovation. The players will come and wave their sticks and I think they're giving out some sort of a ceremonial sticks as well. Yeah, it'll be a joyous event. What if they're down 6 nothing? It's not going to be crying like Monday at the Palace. People are going to be in tears for the last game there. Might not be quite as emotional as the panel. No, either. I don't think so. Woj, thank you very much. We'll talk to you next week. Bye, Woj. All right. Woo! That's when.